What's going on y'all? Welcome. If you just purchased a PlayStation 3 or you want a fresh start on your existing console and you'd like to have the fastest loading and home screen navigation speeds as possible, then this video will be for you. I'll be explaining in two simple steps how to upgrade your existing hard drive to a solid state drive, or if you'd like to put another hard drive in, that's fine as well, though I must say solid state is absolutely the way to go. I've had a one terabyte SSD in my main PlayStation 3 console for several months now, and I can tell you with 100% certain that it is absolutely worth it. The gains you receive are not astronomical, but very noticeable, especially if you go back to a console that does not have an SSD in it. Before we get started, please note that I will not be showing you how to back up and restore what you currently have on your console. I do have a video going over that in detail that I will link below and show on screen. Okay, so step one is selecting our new drive and obtaining the PlayStation 3 firmware. I'm going to recommend the BX500 Crucial Solid State Drive shown here. It's available in a 240, 480, and 1 terabyte storage capacity. You can choose whichever drive you like though. Just know that 1.5 terabytes is the maximum the PS3 will accept. I don't recommend that large though because Others have reported encountering issues with the drive this large. I recommend a one terabyte if you have a large digital and physical PS3 collection. I chose a 480 gigabyte for the backwards compatible model that I will be installing it into as I only really intend to play PS2 games on it. Though one day I may run custom firmware in order to back up all my PS2 games to the drive. So the 480 will be good for me. All right, so for this next portion of step one, may be optional depending on which console you have. If you have a backwards compatible FAT model A, B, C, or E, or the 40 gigabyte G model, along with the 12 gigabyte Super Slim, then you don't have to perform this step as the firmware is loaded onto a chip on the motherboard itself. All other FAT models, as well as Slim and Super Slim models, will have to perform this step as the firmware is loaded onto the HDD itself, so we will need to manually put it onto our new drive after installing. Alright, so for those who will need the PlayStation 3 firmware, first you're going to need a USB drive of 32GB or less. This is because we need to be formatted to FAT32, and if you have a Windows computer, you can only format FAT32 if it's 32GB or less. I recommend a 4GB or 8GB that you can dedicate to your PS3. I've dedicated a 4GB drive that I also use to store my game states locally just in case. So I'll go ahead and show you how to format that drive first. Go ahead and plug it into your computer. Right click the Windows icon here and click Disk Management. If you used the USB drive before, it's gonna show up here. If you have not, it should show up down here. Here's mine right here. It's a 20 gigabyte drive and it says unallocated. Now, if it's the first time you put your disk just drive in, sometimes it'll pop up and ask you to initialize. If it says that, go ahead and make sure you click Master Boot Record or MBR. To make sure that we have ours already in MBR, if you right click on this space here and it says Convert to GPT, that means you're on MBR. If it says Convert to MBR, you wanna click it so that it goes to MBR, which stands for Master Boot Record, which is required by the PlayStation 3. So when that's done, right click in the unallocated space here, or if you've used it before, it will say something different, and click new simple volume. Go ahead and click next. Make sure you choose all of it, click next. Assign whatever letter you want. I'm gonna name mine Z. And right here is the important part. Make sure you choose FAT32 for the FAT file system, and then you can name it whatever you like. I'm just gonna name mine PlayStation 3 because this is for a PlayStation 3 B model. And just keep it as quick format and click next and finish. And it'll take just a couple seconds and this is how it should look afterwards. So once that is done, I will show you how to get the firmware from PlayStation's website. I already have the website in right here. This is it right here. I'm gonna put it down in the description because it takes quite a few clicks to get here. But basically what you would do is go to the PlayStation's regular website and go to support and you're gonna click all the way till you find PlayStation 3 system software update. And when you're on this screen, as you can see 4.92 is the most recent update. Make sure your PlayStation 3 is also at 4.92 before doing this. And then you wanna scroll down and click update using a computer and drop that down and it's gonna have download PS3 update button. If you're on Google Chrome, it may not let you download this, but I'm on Firefox and it's gonna give you a warning, but go ahead and download it anyway, and it's gonna look just like this. All right, so now that we're formatted and we have the PlayStation 3 firmware update, let's go into our file explorer. The update should be within your downloads folder. Here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this onto my desktop. And then what you would do is you would go to your drive here. Here's mine, PS3B. And then what you wanna do is create a new folder and you wanna name this folder PS3. Make sure it is in all caps. 
then go into that folder and we're going to create another folder and we're going to put this one as update in all caps. Very good. Once you have that, go ahead and open up that folder. And now we can drop in the PlayStation 3 PUP file straight into that. So it should look something like this within your drive, PS3, all caps, update, all caps, and then here's your update file, and then you're good to go. Now, in order to make sure it is working properly, I recommend to plug it into your PlayStation 3 and go to either the photos, the video area on the X and B, and make sure that the drive does indeed recognize Make sure the PlayStation 3 recognizes that the drive is there. It should just pop up like so. All right, and now on to step two, where we will be installing the new SSD or HDD into our PS3. I will be showing how to do it on all three different PS3 models. All right, so let's start with the fat model PS3. At the bottom of the console, remove the plastic door as shown, then use a screwdriver to remove the blue screw. This screw is actually not a Phillips head, but a J JIS or Japanese industrial screw head. A Phillips typically works, just be careful as they do strip very easily. Once out, for this specific fat backwards compatible model, you need to grab the wire and slide to the right as shown to then pull it out. For later fat models, you'll just have to lift up on the latch and pull straight out. Now on the slim model, on the bottom, there is a small little plastic door to undo. Underneath is a similar blue screw to take out. Once out, look at the front underneath where the disc would go. You'll want to slide this door to the right as shown. Then grab the wire handle and pull it on out. Now the super slim can be quite tricky. On the top right side as shown, you'll need to apply pressure downward with your thumbs to this plastic cover and slide to the left. It can be quite difficult at times, just keep trying by putting your thumbs in different spots and eventually it'll come off. So yeah, again, push down and push to the left. Again, it can be on there pretty tightly, but once it comes off, lifts off just like that. Then rinse and repeat with the blue screw and pull out the drive. Once you have your drive out, there will be four screws that secure the drive into the little metal cage. You'll want to remove these four screws using a similar Phillips head to what you used before. Again, these screws are not Phillips heads, but they're actually JIS screws, so it can be quite difficult at times trying to use a Phillips. If you're having trouble, grab some pliers like I do here and just bite the outside of the screw and twist, and that typically will help. Then just slide in your new drive and replace the four screws. You do not have to put them as tight as they may have been when you took them out and put it back into your PlayStation 3 and put the blue screw back on and secure it all back together. All right, so now that we have our new SSD or HDD inside our PlayStation, we want to go ahead and boot it up. Now, if you're on one of the consoles I mentioned earlier that does not require the USB with the firmware, it'll start up like normal and ask you to format, which takes a couple seconds, and then you're done. Congrats. If you're on any of the other consoles that requires the USB stick with firmware, when you boot up, you're going to be met with a screen that tells you you need a USB stick with the firmware. So go ahead and put that inside of your console's USB slot and proceed with the on-screen prompts. What it's going to do is format the drive and then install the firmware to that drive and then ask you to just and then ask you to configure some display settings. And once you're done with all that, it's going to start up like normal and you're done. Congrats. If you go over to system settings and go to system information, you'll see your new storage capacity. Please take note that it will be quite a bit lower than the face value of the storage drive you bought. This is because storage drives are never the exact amount shown on the box. Plus, no matter what, your PlayStation will reserve 10% of whatever capacity drive you have for the firmware, even though it doesn't actually take out that much. In my case, I have a 480 gigabyte drive, and it's only showing up with 396 gigabytes. It's just, a, it's just how it is. But this is still an, an abundance amount of memory for the PlayStation 3, so we're good to roll, baby. If you're having any trouble at all, please let me know down in the comments, and I'll do my best to help you out. So enjoy your new HDD or SSD and enjoy those faster speeds on that nice SSD. It's very awesome. I love it a whole, I love it a ton. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Let me know what you might want to see next. I'm still going to be talking about the B model PlayStation 3 coming up soon. I'm also probably going to maybe do a video to just kind of go over all the PlayStation 3 consoles and do sort of a buying guide, which one is the best to buy. So look forward to that. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next.